Oscar is my three-year-old little boy. He is beautiful, aren't you? And gorgeous and funny and loving and amazing. Um, and he was diagnosed with autism six months ago. Dexter's speech delay for me was definitely the thing that made me um, Google what maybe the problem was. Something many people are confused about is, well, what's the difference between a speech delay and children that don't speak because they are autistic? This is Seb. Hi. <laughs> Seb is two years old, aren't you, Seb? You've just turned two. He seems to be typically developing so far, but he does have a speech delay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Seb! This video when they're in bed. Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. Bye bye bye. Wave. Bye, bye, bye. Wave bye bye. Good boy. Can I have a kiss? <coughs> mm. <laughs> <sighs> Silence. According to Dr. Google, two year olds should be able to say roughly, well, at least 50 words and stop, be starting to string two and three word sentences together. Seb has about 10 to 15 clear words, so quite a big difference, quite delayed. Obviously, as I said before, Dexter is three, but it would be unfair to compare Dexter at three to Seb at two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about Dexter up until his second birthday. I am in no way comparing my children in a way that puts one of them in a negative light. They both have completely different strengths and difficulties. They are both celebrated. They are both loved exactly the same. They both bring joy to our family. I just wanted to say that. Although speech delay was one of the first things that made me start looking into autism, there were other signs. I'm not going to go into them specifically in this video. I've done other videos on the signs and the traits that we saw in him from 0 to 2. So let's talk about early speech development. Babies will typically babble from a very young age. This is what Seb did. He, he babbled, my mama, da da da, he did all that. Dexter didn't. So Dexter did make noise and he did produce some speech sounds but a lot of his babble was unusual it sounded unusual it had an unusual tone and um, he made quite a lot of non-speech sounds he would hum a lot he did a lot of grunting he would roll his tongue when he started properly babbling it would it would be mostly vowel sounds like ah, 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 not typical like consonant sounds um, Seb also, I think, babbled earlier. So the really big thing is even young babies that can't form clear words babble to communicate. Dexter only ever babbled f to, like, entertain himself. He never did that whole thing that babies do where they, it seems like they're having a conversation with you but they're not making any sense. Which leads me quite nicely onto the next thing which was mimicking. This is a huge thing, I think, for a lot of children with autism. They struggle to mimic sounds. Having said that, a lot of children also with autism present with echolalia, which is parroting. So, like I say, every presentation is different. Dexter never did the echolalia thing. Maybe, the, maybe we still got that to come. But one thing we really struggled with, and I know some children on the spectrum really do struggle with, is mimicking sounds, mimicking actions, mimicking anything. When Seb was very young, and I'm talking like four, five months old, you could stick your tongue out, you could blow raspberry noises, you could go bap, 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 and he would copy. Dexter, even now, he struggles to mimic. He struggles, even when he's trying to mimic, he struggles to get the sound right sometimes. He's getting better, he's definitely getting better, but it's, it's, it's something he struggles with. We couldn't teach him sign language or anything like that because he wouldn't mimic us. When we eventually did start to teach him sign language, we would have to do hand over hand. I would have to physically put his hands in whatever sign I wanted him to make, and then he would get it, because he would learn through doing. Another key difference I've found with my boys is the way in which they build speech. Seb will 
um, mimic like a whole word. So he'll say like apple, apple, and he'll say it over and over again. And then he'll build on it. He'll add another word, ball, ball. And generally his vocabulary just grows. Dexter will gain and lose sounds all the time. So for ages we had like a ga for go, ga, ready, steady, ga. And we had that for months and months. And then it just went. He, I, he, it was like he wasn't interested in saying it. And then when he started trying to say it again a few weeks later, it came out ba. Ready, steady, ba. And the same has happened with, with lots of other sounds. Now, the, he's always regained them, but it, it's kind of a very spiky development of speech. He's not really motivated to speak. He do, it, he's just genuinely doesn't seem interested in it. Um, so... Although we're trying to work on these sounds with him, I can't really encourage speech in the way that I could encourage speech in a typical child like my other son because there's no interest there. So when it comes to the purpose of speech, Seb very much speaks just because he likes to speak. I found this really strange. So when Seb learnt the word Nana for banana, we would go past and he would go in the kitchen every time he would point and go Nana, Nana. And because Dexter's only ever made speech sounds to get something, because that's the way he's been taught, Seb was just saying Nana just to tell me it was a Nana, and I really couldn't get my head around this. Every time he said it, I was offering him a banana, and he was like, oh, dude, what are you doing? I don't want a banana. <laughs> Seb will do the whole having a conversation with you. He'll come up to me and go like, I don't know, 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 with the, you know, pitch and tone, and... Facial expressions and although he's not making clear words, he's trying to communicate something in his head. He's saying something um, And Dexter's never done that even to this day. He, he doesn't really do that The most he's ever done is he'll drop a train on the floor or he'll make his cars crash and he'll go Yeah, and that means crash. Look mommy. I'm making it go crash. That's what it means um, which sounds um, simple, but that is a really big step for Dexter. And the first time he's ever made any attempt to express anything through language. Aside from all those things, if you're just looking basically at word count, Seb, like I say, at two years old, has about 15, about 15 words. Um, he definitely lacks clarity, he struggles with pronunciation, everything seems to come out as bat or dat. But with Dexter, at two, he had zero words. Absolutely none. None whatsoever. Not even half a word. He had nothing. So I would say the, the biggest clue as to whether it's just a speech delay or something that's linked to a developmental condition like autism is more to do with your gut feeling. I think as, as a parent, you just have that gut feeling if there's something different. I, I guess with Seb, even though he had a speech delay, um, from the age of about 12 months, I never had major concerns about it being autism. Uh, I think, I, I, I know I said I wasn't going to go into the other um, signs and traits that we saw in Dexter, but I guess it kind of ties in because it's to do with communication. And the big difference, aside from speech, was um, non-verbal communication. Dexter didn't really communicate non-verbally, whereas Seb, even though his words aren't clear, he communicates with us all the time, he interacts with us all the time. I guess the key point I'm trying to make here is that communication is way more important than speech. It doesn't matter how your child communicates, if they are communicating, that's, that's the goal. Although we have maybe different challenges to a typical family, our family is exactly the way I want it to be. I am beyond lucky to have these boys. We have so much fun. No, no. <laughs> I feel like when I started worrying about autism, my family life paused. That's how it felt to me. It definitely changed anyway. And the reason for that was because I needed time to process it. Me, nobody else, just me. Autism parenting is really about having the right mindset. It means absolutely everything on this journey. And once I'd done that and I'd come to a place of acceptance and positivity, you know what? My life was exactly where I left it. I feel like I had a little bit of a mental breakdown and I think a big factor in that was the 400,000 videos online you see with red flags and warning signs for autism. I don't even get me started on those videos. Like, I think I'm gonna do a separate video on this myself because this, this negative narrative that we're constantly being fed about children that develop differently, it, it 
creates fear and panic and anxiety and that's what it did to me but I'm not there now. We're here, we're happy, we're a family, we're enjoying life and that's all that matters. So I hope this has given a little bit of insight into our experiences with the speech delay versus autism. Um, please subscribe to our channel if you would like to find out more about our family and follow our journey. And thank you for watching this video. Bye. Can I have a high five? Good boy. <laughs> Can you go one, two, three? Oh. Can you say open? Try again. Open. Good boy. Say please. Can you say Oreo? Oreo. But open. Open.